Let's look at chapter 3, which covers norm and distance. So first we'll talk about norm. Uh, norm is the norm of a vector is supposed to be a measure of its length. Um, so we'll talk about that. From that, we're allowed to talk about distance, and that's another topic that we'll cover uh, in, this, uh, in this mini lecture. So the norm of a vector, uh, and this is specifically a, it's called a Euclidean norm. Um, in this course, we're just going to call it the norm because it's the only norm we're going to use. There actually are other norms that are actually widely used, but by far the most widely used norm is the one we're going to talk about, the Euclidean norm. Here's what it is. It says there's an n vector x and the norm, which is denoted with these two double bars on either side of x. I'll say something about that. It's supposed to generalize the absolute value for a number. So, okay. And so the notation is meant to look like it. So here it is. It's the square root of the sum of the squares. That is the norm of a vector. Um, and you can write that if you like as the square root of the inner product of x with itself. So that's, uh, that's the norm of a vector. Um, and it's supposed to measure the size of a vector. Um, some people say the length. Unfortunately, the length of a vector is a little ambiguous because it could either be n in this case, um, or it could be the norm. So if you say size, however, it's probably, it probably means the, uh, the, the, the norm. Um, now, when n is 1, so it's a 1 vector, which is, by the way, the same as just a scalar, then uh, the square root of the sum of the squares is nothing but the square root of the square of the entry. And that's the absolute value, right? Because when you square something, if it's negative or positive, you get the same number. And when you take the square root, we're taking the positive square root or the non-negative square root. So it's a generalization of the absolute value to uh, vectors is what, what, that's the basic idea. It's supposed to give you the length. And let's just do a quick example. Uh, let's find, you know, the, let's find the, the norm of this vector. Well, that's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared, and that's the square root of 2, eh, which is about 1 point, you know, uh, 4, 1, something like that, about. So that's the length of a vector. Um, okay. Now, there's a bunch of properties. Um, some of these are simple. Uh, one is not. I'll, I'll say a little bit about that uh, later. Um, so the first is uh, homogeneity. And what this means is the following. It says that if I take a vector and I scale uh, all of its entries by beta, that means multiply it by the scalar vector multiplication beta, the norm of the result is actually the absolute value of beta times x, uh, times the norm of x. Um, and that tells you a lot of stuff already. It says, for example, that the norm of x and the norm of minus x are the same. And you could figure that out too, because if you, if you replace all the entries xi with negatives and you square them, you're back right where you started. So everything's it's just the same. Um, so that's the idea. Uh, this one is actually relatively easy to, <coughs> to show because what happens is uh, the sum of the squares, <coughs> each of the squares gets scaled by beta squared, but then they all come out of the square root as a beta, absolute value beta, I should say. Okay. Um, the triangle inequality. This one is, is interesting. It's got a beautiful visual uh, visualization that we'll, we'll show later, um, but we're not going to go into it now. I should also say it's not something that's immediately easy to see or something like that. It would take a paragraph or something to develop it. It's not hard. It just involves completing the square. I'm not going to do it here. Uh, you can read about it in the book or something like that, but so this is the, but it's the so-called triangle inequality. It's very interesting. It says that the, the length of a sum uh, of two vectors is less than the sum of the lengths, okay? Now, I said that in English, but it's the same as overloading, right? So the first sum was the sum of vectors and the second sum was the sum of two numbers, right? So that's vector addition right there, and that is addition of two non-negative numbers. So, um, all right. Uh, the next one is non-negativity. That, that one is extremely obvious because when you take the sum of the squares of x, you get a non-negative number, that's good because you're then going to take the square root, and if it were a negative number, it wouldn't be a good thing. Um, so, and then of course the square root for us is defined as the non-negative square root. So that that one's obvious. This one's interesting. Definiteness. This says that if a if a norm of a vector is zero, the only possible way that can happen is it's zero. That I am going to say something about. So let's see what that means. Suppose I told you that the norm of x is zero. Well, that tells you that the norm of x squared. Zero. 
But if the norm of x squared is zero, that's the same as x1 squared plus, uh, plus xn squared. That's sum. OK. Now, um, if I tell you that a sum of numbers is zero, you absolutely cannot conclude that they are all zero. Uh, here's a nice example of that. Uh, 1 and minus 1. Their sum is zero. They're bo obviously both not zero. OK. However, if I tell you that a sum of non-negative numbers is zero, then you, conclude that, then you can conclude that all of them are zero, okay? Um, and that's easy to see. If, if the numbers are uh, non-negative and one of them is positive, then the whole sum is positive. And if you're positive, you are not zero. So, uh, so what this says is from this, we can conclude that xi is equal to zero, okay? So that's the picture. Um, and the triangle inequality, we'll, we'll see later. Uh, how, how, how that works. But um, we'll also see a picture of it that, that gives, you know, that explains the name. Okay, so these are some very basic properties of the norm. Um, so far, we haven't done anything with a norm that would be even vaguely of interest, but we'll get there. Okay, now a very re a closely related quantity is called the RMS value, uh, which stands for root mean square. And so let me explain what that is. It's, it's, an, it's another measure of the size of a, of, of a vector. So here, um, the mean square value of a vector is the sum, it's the sum of the squares, right? That would be the norm squared, divided by n. And you can see what it is. It's the square of the entries and then the mean of them across the entries. That's the mean square. And that is expressed in terms of a norm as norm squared x, that's how you'd say that, divided by n, okay? So that, that's the mean square value. Um, what's very commonly used is something called the RMS value or root mean square value. Um, uh, it's used throughout engineering, you know, uh, maybe in, in pure math, I, maybe somebody would figure out what you're talking about, but it is used through absolutely throughout engineering and many, many other fields is RMS value. Here's what it is. Well, it's literally what its name says. It's the square root of the mean square value. So here, that's the mean square. You take the square root and you get, it's actually equal to the norm of X divided by square root N. So it's nothing more than the norm of X divided by square root N. Okay, now the reason you would use this is that it's going to uh, it, it it actually is more intuitive. Um, so what we'll see is that the RMS value of vector gives roughly speaking something like the typical value of the absolute value of xi. I mean, it it doesn't, but in in a certain way it does, right? So um, uh, so here's a good example: is take the vector of all ones, right? And I ask you, what is the What's the norm of ones? Well, the norm of ones, uh, here, I'll make a bold one here, is actually the square root of n, uh, where n is the length. And why? Because you would, to get the norm, you would take the sum of the squares of the entries, all the entries are one, that gives you uh, n, and then you take the square root. So you get square root n. Um, so, and that's fine. Um, by the way, if I'm comparing norms of vectors always with the same dimension, it does, the square root n factor doesn't matter, right? Um, but if I show you a vector of ones and I said, you know, tell me about that vector, one seems like a natural thing to say. That's the RMS value. Um, and the reason that's a natural thing to say is because all the entries are one. And so one is kind of telling you the size of, of the individual entries, right? So um, RMS value is also useful for comparing uh, sizes of vectors of different lengths, right? That, that's actually very critical, right? And we'll, we'll see several applications where you do exactly that, where you, you know, you, you, you take the RMS value of one size vector and another size vector, and now they're sort of comparable uh, this way. Okay, so that's RMS value, very widely uh, used. You probably have seen it before. It's the most natural way to quote, uh, let's say, the, the, the to, to give an idea of the size of a vector. Okay. Um, one property, and this is going to come up later in the course, uh, but we'll mention it now. Uh, and that is that, that you can do the norm, you can calculate the norm of block vectors in a very uh, simple way. Um, and uh, what it is is this, is here, here I have three vectors, A, B, and C. Um, this is our notation. That, remember, that's a, a stacked vector. Uh, so I stack A on top of B on top of C, and I take the norm squared. Well, if you think about it, how do I take the norm squared of, uh, of, 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 a, of, of a vector? It's the sum of the squares of the entries. So I would first take the sum of the squares of all the entries of A, I'd add that to the sum of the squares of all the entries of B, add that to all the entries, and, and you'd get, you can see this. And you can also see that by just multiplying out the inner product like this. Um, and that says, 
it's and, and this is a very tricky formula to parse, so you have to be super duper on your toes. Um, it says that the norm of the block vector here is equal to the following. It is the square root of the norm squared of A uh, plus the norm squared of B plus the norm squared of C. Okay? Or we can put it in super compact and honestly very confusing notation, but it does work. Okay, so what this says is the, the norm of a stacked vector, A, B, C. And of course, I'm, I'm showing you stack of three, but it could be a stack of two, stack of 20, doesn't matter, right? Um, over here, what it says is that's the norm of, now these are numbers, so A, B, and C, the norms of those, those are three numbers. This is a three vector in here, that, that's a three vector. And this is the norm of the three vector, but the norm of a three vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the entries, and that's exactly what this is. So, so we'll use these ideas that connect uh, norms of stacked things uh, later. Uh, actually, we'll use it in the form that the, nor that the norm squared of a stacked thing is the sum of the norm squares of the entries, right? That, so this is really the one that we're going to use later. Um, so, okay. Now we're going to talk about the Chebyshev inequality. Um, and you know, it's a famous inequality that says it basically limits the number of entries of a vector that can be uh, bigger than a certain size, right? Um, and that's the and that depends on the norm, right? So we'll look we'll look at how that works. And so the story starts this way: you say, um, let's take the entries of a vector x1 through xn, and let's consider their absolute values. And suppose I told you that k of them are bigger than or equal to some number a. A could be whatever, it doesn't point six, it doesn't anything at all, okay? Um, all right, well, if, if k of those absolute values are bigger than a, then k of the numbers, which are the squares, are bigger than a squared, okay? Now, when I add up a bunch of squares and k of them are bigger than a squared, then the sum is better has got to be bigger than ka squared. In fact, it would only be ka squared if the other numbers, the other n minus k numbers, are all zero. Otherwise, this is strict here. It's even bigger. Okay. But this is the norm squared of x. It's bigger than ka squared. And so what this says is I simply divide by a squared and I get this. k is less than the norm squared of x divided by a squared. Okay. And so th what that says is basically it says that the number of entries of a vector that exceed in absolute value a number a is no more than uh, the norm squared of x squared, norm squared, divided by a squared. That's it, okay? And that's, the, that's this famous Chebyshev inequality, right? That's, 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 that's what it says. Um, and it's actually maybe clearer in terms of RMS value. And this is the way certainly normal people think of it in, in terms of the RMS value. It's this, um, you divide appropriately by squared and in the right place and everything, and here's what you get. It says if I have a vector, x, it says that the fraction of the entries with absolute value x bigger than a is no more than RMS of x divided by a squared. So that's it. Um, and uh, so let's, let's look at some special cases. I could take a equals the RMS value squared. Um, and it said, it says absolutely nothing. It says the fraction of entries of a vector uh, where the absolute value is bigger than or equal to the RMS value is bigger than or equal to uh, 1. So, okay, fine. Um, okay, however, it gets interesting when A is bigger than RMS of X, right? So, for example, uh, you could take 5 RMS, uh, something like that, you know, 5 times RMS of A. And then it says, it says it's very, it's very specific. It says that no more than one, then this is now one fifth, no more than one fifth squared, so one twenty fifth. So no more than 4% of, of the entries of a vector can be bigger than five times the RMS value. Okay, so that's, that's what it says. Um, and by the way, this is kind of the idea of, of, of justifying the idea that the RMS value of a vector is like the typical value of the entries. Um, the entries can be bigger than the typical value, but they're, sharp, they're actually rather limited, right? That you, if you, the number that can be more than five times that number is less than 4% of your total vector. So that's kind of the, that, that's the idea. We'll see, we'll, we'll see applications of this uh, a bit later.